So we consider ourselves an agent of change in terms of how other vendors see the marketplace and the moves they make as well around open source and cost. I think the days of um, the days where IT was flush and they could invest in and in, in best of breed across many different spaces and, and they would and customers would bear the burden of the integration process has, has ended. They're looking for more seamless environments that work out of the box and that's something that Red Hat has a strong reputation on delivering. We're extending that horizontal reach so um, certainly certainly virtualization, you see virtualization in, in some in some sense as uh, the next wave in the operating system space. I mean, it is the, sp is the space that most closely touches the hardware. And so it, it opens up a whole new area of problems that it solves. So we, we see virtualization as just a natural extension of the operating systems. We will be the leader in open source virtualization. We've um, shown an appetite to be much more aggressive on delivering open source virtualization solutions to our clients. Um, and leading them through this evolution that is KVM. Um, we'll also be uniting um, both virtual desktop and virtual server environments into a seamless fabric. Um, that hasn't been done before. Um, we'll also be um, mirroring cloud with, with enterprise infrastructure. So in the past, clouds have always been separate. So when you moved your applications to the cloud, you were running on IT infrastructure that you had no knowledge of the security model, the APIs, the ABIs, how to manage it, um, the performance, et cetera. So we all know that open source is going to power the future of the cloud. Red Hat is going, our virtualization strategy is part and parcel with the unification of the cloud environments that, that our customers are going to use and that are being currently hosted and the unification of that with the environments that we'll bring to our customers directly. And so in part, we won't be putting our customers on either islands that are clouds or islands that are virtualization. We're going to be combining the fabric into one that is seamless. And I think that that's the only acceptable solution um, that has legs for the future. KVM brings us leaps and bounds into the getting closer to ubiquity because from a feature perspective, I mean, with in the past, you know, you had to worry about is this feature that's in the operating system, is it also in the, in the, in the hypervisor layer? With KVM, what's in the operating system just comes for free, virtualized. And so that was one of the big things that attracted Brian and I to, to, to Kubernetes was in, in, in KVM was that you know, just just having that parity and not having to worry, make those decisions. Is it is it here? Will it be there? It's just in in both places. That will lead to the ubiquity, and and that's one of the reasons why um, you know we think we think KVM has a lot of a lot of room to grow. Fundamentally, Red has taken a different approach to virtualization than VMware. VMware still treats virtualization on the hypervisor as um, an upsell to selling more management. And so anytime you start to think about virtualization as a, as a product-oriented sale, um, it absolutely is going to prevent the ubiquitous use of virtualization capabilities. Anything that gets in the way of ubiquitous use of virtualization capabilities is going to really hold back, you know, IT infrastructure is going to hold back like what we just talked about with clouds. So Red Hat's model is, just, is to separate the two. Red Hat's model is to help our customers manage end-to-end -end solutions, whether they be physical, whether they be virtual, whether they be cloud, or whether they be a combination. But as part of that, we also plan to free the virtualization layer. And by freeing the virtualization layer, we will allow virtualization to be ubiquitous and become part of every core platform that ships, um, irrespective of whether they're using Red Hat's management solutions. And we think that fundamentally, we are going to be the catalyst or the leader that's going to drive virtualization capability to the next level and gets from 10% to 90%.